Hey there, Drady here. Today's video is how to choose the best wax. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us. So the question today for this video is how to choose the best wax. But before we get into that, there are a few things to consider when making that decision. One would be the type of candle that you're gonna make. Two, the hot and cold throw, which we'll get to later, maximum fragrance load and glass adhesion. So let's jump right into the type of candle. So there's lots of different types of candles out there. The first one would be a pillar candle which is similar to this. They're just tall, they stand on their own, don't need a container. Um, the second is a container candle, which is similar to this, meaning it's just in a container. Right. Um, then there's votives and tea lights, which right. are the smaller container candles between like an inch and a half to like two inches, mm -hmm. the really tiny ones. Um, then there's taper candles, which are tall, narrow at the top candles um, that are normally found in like candlesticks, but they stand on their own, no need for a container. And then tarts, or also known as wax melts, yes. which are just the little squares of wax that you use in a wax warmer. And they don't have a wick, right? And they don't have a wick. They're just the tiny little cubes of wax. You just stick it in a wax warmer and call it good. Yep. So the next thing that you have to consider is the hot and cold throw. So the hot throw is the amount of fragrance that is released when the candle is burning and the cold throw is the amount of fragrance that the candle is releasing when it is not lit and it's not burning. These are huge because personally I hate buying a candle and taking it home, lighting it up and it doesn't have any type of fragrance release. Yeah. So this is something that you have to consider when making your candle. Do your research, practice, test until you get the right blend. Go. The next is maximum fragrance load. And this is important because different waxes have different fragrance loads. So if you want a strong hot throw, like what we just talked about, then you would want to choose a wax with a higher fragrance load, like a 10 to 12%. Anything lower, then it's not gonna fill up yeah. your your room or any room that it's lit yeah. in. Yeah, and nobody yeah. wants that. No. no, no. You want a good, strong smelling candle so yeah, having a wax with a high fragrance load is yeah. very important. Yeah, anywhere from 10 to 12% works with our candles, depending on the wax that we use. I know when we use coconut wax, we um, do 10 to 12% and soy wax 10 to 12%. But something like beeswax will have like a 6% fragrance load, right? Mm -hmm. So depending on the type of wax you have would determine the fragrance load that it would release. So the next thing we have to consider when choosing a wax is glass adhesion. So what this means is how well the wax interacts with the size of your vessel. Some waxes perform differently, some cause frosting, some cause wet spots, and some just won't bind to the side of your vessel. So that's something you have to learn through testing and practicing. Mm -hmm. All right guys, now let's get into the fun stuff. We're gonna talk about the different types of waxes. Mm -hmm. So the first one we're talking about is coconut wax, which I have a bit of coconut wax right here. Um, so coconut wax is made from the meat of coconut and it's combined with other ingredients to give it more substance and the wax-like consistency. Um, it has a really great hot and cold throw. Yep. It has really good jar adhesion. Um, it has a high fragrance load of like 12%. Um, and it actually has, it burns longer and yeah. it burns a cleaner burn. Yeah. And it's really easy to use, super user friendly. Yeah. And, and it doesn't really have any frosting mm -mm. or um, pr do wet spots on the side of your jars. No, which is why it's really user friendly because a lot of the issues that you would have with some other waxes, you don't have with coconut. So far, as we've been using coconut, we've had the best experience with it. Mm -hmm. um, not really any problems at all. The hot th one thing that I will note is the hot throw has been extremely awesome. Yeah. That's something that we struggled with a lot, trying to make our candle smell so mm -hmm. that other people could walk in and say, oh, what's that smell? Yeah. And with coconut wax, it seems to be doing that for us. Yeah. The next one we're going to talk about is beeswax. And this is made from boiling honeycomb from a honeybee. Um, on the it's more on the more expensive side, right? This is more for like luxury candles. Yeah. Um, and one thing to know about the beeswax is that in every candle that's made of it, you could smell a little bit of honey. Mm -hmm. 
with your fragrance as well, but it, it just sets it apart from the rest of them because it has its own unique smell. It is more expensive. It does have a lower fragrance load of about 6%, um, but when you blend it with other types of waxes, those help with the fragrance load and help keep that fragrance and release it better than it would on its own. But when it comes to jar adhesion, it has pretty, we haven't had any trouble with it so far. Um, we haven't had any frosting, any craters, I know there was one instance where our candle kind of cracked in the middle. But, but I think that's pretty common with beeswax. Really? Um, but it's something easy to fix with just like a heat gun. You yep. can heat it over. Um, yeah, we just put a heat gun over it for a couple minutes. and. Yeah, but fixed. other than that, we haven't really had too many issues with beeswax. Yep. And it is more expensive, so you're going to invest more money into it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's worth it. The next one is soy wax. So, oh, it's a big bag. So this is soy wax. So sometimes it comes in flakes or sometimes it comes in a giant slab. Mm -hmm. There you go. This one um, is GW464. Which is a really popular type of soy wax. But soy wax is a vegetable wax that's derived from soybean oil. Um, the fragrance load for soy wax is a 10 to 12%. Um, however, it's also known for a weak hot and cold throw, even though the fragrance load is pretty high. Um, but that's just something that um, you can perfect with testing yep. and the right fragrance oil and the right wick. Um, so it's an easy thing to fix. Um, it's also a pretty clean burning candle. You know, it's made from soybeans, so it's a renewable resource. Um, it has the somewhat good glass adhesion it honestly depends if you have a good batch of soy yeah, or not because yep. sometimes you'll get a bad batch of soy which means it'll it won't stick to your container but right. if you have a good batch then it has um good glass adhesion yeah and one thing that i've noticed when working with soy is the craters oh right? yes like um because soy is definitely known for frosting for craters um, which you'll see when you're yeah. testing it, but those are all things that can be fixed. With yeah, nothing crazy. A heat gun. Craters are like sinkholes, so they'll just be a hole in your candle. Yeah, and, and they're caused by air bubbles when yep. the wax is being melted. Yeah, but there's always a way to fix that, so. Yeah, so they're not big problems, but, um, again, soy is commonly known for some more issues, but they're not detrimental issues, so yep. they're really easy. They're easy to fix. Yep. All right, last but not least, we're gonna talk about the most popular type of candle wax, and that is paraffin wax. Um, these are, this is removed from petroleum, right? Yeah. So it's a derivative of petroleum. Um, it's the most popular type of wax because of how hard it gets, and it's used in pillar candles and tea light candles and pretty much all types of candles. And tapered candles. Yeah. Because it's a strong wax, it doesn't need a container. So right. tapered candles, pillar, Pillar candles are best with paraffin because right. it's so strong. Um, they have great glass adhesion and the fragrance load for paraffin wax is 6%. But when you mix paraffin with additional additives, it brings up the fragrance yeah. load. So um, you can get a better hot and cold throw. Mm -hmm. um, and paraffin is also one of the less expensive waxes out there, which right. is why it's so common. Yeah. Paraffin wax is also known to be toxic, but nowadays everything's toxic and you know, so I would just recommend trying it out for yourself, seeing how it works with whatever type of fragrance you're using mm -hmm. and um, be your own judge. Another reason why it's so popular is it's lack of odor when it's burning. Yeah. So you could smell more of the fragrance. Like when you burn a soy candle, you could smell a little bit of the soy mixed with the fragrance, but when it comes to paraffin, um, there's no odor. So you're yeah. getting just straight fragrance. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's one of the most popular. Mm -hmm. Cool. One. <laughs> so there's also um, many other types of like waxes and also different wax blends out there. We're not going to cover all of them today or else this will be an extra long video. Yeah. Um, but again, it all comes down to just testing it out. And you really have to consider the factors we mentioned at the beginning of the type of candles you're yep. making, uh, the hot throw, cold throw, glass adhesion, and fragrance load. Because when you consider, okay, I want to make these types of candles, right. it can help narrow, narrow down your search to what type of wax you can use. Um, but it really just depends on testing guess, on testing yeah yep. practicing um yep 
And I mean, we just want to encourage you to try every type of wax right. out there that you can. At least try it once, see if you like it, yeah. see if it's what you want to use. Because then if you don't like it, then okay, you don't like it. Then mm -hmm. but at least you've tried it before you automatically go and start eliminating, oh, I automatically don't want to use right. this one. Um, because there's lots of great waxes out there. Right, yep. And one thing to consider is that um, there's no perfect formula to mm -hmm. making a candle. We can't sit here and say we figured out the science behind making a perfect candle. Yeah. Because really it depends on way too many variables mm -hmm. um, and pretty much what the candle maker prefers and um, what the customer loves. So, mm -hmm. well, another video finished. We hope that it helped. We hope that it answered some of the questions that you had. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any more questions in the future, go ahead and drop them in the comment section below. Also follow us on social media right here. <laughs> Um, and don't forget, on November 11th, in a few weeks now, we're going to be opening up our Drady shop so that we can put our custom candles, the candles that we put so much time, love, and effort into, mm -hmm. up for sale on our website so that the customers can buy it, so that you could buy it and try it out for yourself. We love your feedback. We appreciate you being here with us today. We love you so much. God bless. See you next week. Bye.